The Klingon Defense Forces, or in their native language, Tlingkan Chebek, are the umbrella under which the space and planetary based military forces of the Klingon Empire are currently organized. The organization was formed in 2297 out of what had formerly been the Klingon Imperial Navy and Army. Tlingkan Ho Yuklash Zol! as a result of the reorganization of the Empire following the Praxis explosion in 2293. The KDF in peacetime operates comparatively small numbers of ships aimed towards border patrol and training missions. However, in times of war, the military forces of the Great Houses and various systems militias are brought under the authority of the KDF for the duration of the conflict under the direct authority of the Chancellor. The organization is also responsible for maintaining Klingon naval infrastructure in the form of shipyards and bases, keeping navigational charts up to date, and also exploring the frontiers of Klingon space to discover new potential threats or enemies the Empire may face, as well as valuable new worlds for colonization and exploitation. A majority of Klingon officers are also trained in KDF academies before moving on to serve in various house militaries throughout the Empire. Since its earliest years, the Klingon Empire had often been fractious and disunited, with the central government's authority over the Great Houses often waxing and waning thanks to the strength or weakness of whatever Chancellor was reigning. A trend which was accelerated with the death of the last Klingon Emperor, Midir, in the Old Earth Date 2019. However, since the time of Kales, an imperial navy had existed in one form or another, with great houses permitted to maintain only a handful of smaller warships for their own personal use, leaving the role of interstellar warfare the exclusive job of the imperial navy as the forces afforded to great houses were best suited for local defense and law enforcement. By the time of the Praxis explosion, the Imperial Navy had existed, in one form or another, for the better part of six centuries, with the fleet funded largely through taxation of the mining operations on the moons of Konos and donations from the great houses the empire lacking a income tax bracket for the richest portions of the imperial populace at that time. The loss of Praxis and the collapse of the strong rule of Chancellor Gorkon led to the great houses seizing their chance and taking up greater power to themselves, with much of the imperial fleet choosing to enter into the employ of the houses, as the central government could no longer afford to pay the wages of their crews or even basic ship upkeep. By 2297, the Imperial Fleet had largely ceased to exist as anything but an on-paper organization, with much of its former strength now having sided with the Great Houses, mirroring the transfer of authority from the central government to the Great Houses occurring in the same period. In this year, a new agreement was reached between the Chancellor and the Great Houses, which hammered out and made official the New Order. Known as the Edict of Mirkwah, and in essence a completely new constitution for the Klingon Empire, the Edict assigned the authority for local affairs under the control of the Great Houses, and abolished the system of regional governors in place up to that point. This included law enforcement and local defense leaving foreign policy and war fighting the roles of the central government, but effectively passing day-to-day -day affairs of empire to the authority of local regional rulers. Now permitted to field large naval forces of their own, the great houses swore to obey the central government in times of war, and to maintain their forces to a standard of training and modernity set by the newly formed KDF. Since its inception, the Klingon Defense Force has had a colored record. Ostensibly remaining neutral in the internal affairs of the Klingon government, KDF commanders have often picked sides in the squabbles of the Great Houses and supported conflicting claimants to the Chancellery in the frequent Klingon civil wars which have marked the post-Praxis political environment. However, no one can dispute that in the post-Kittimer environment, 
the KDF has held its crews and ships to a very high standard of professionalism and alertness. Often in sharp contrast to the lax standards that the great houses hold their own forces to. The KDF has seen frequent combat against both internal forces and external threats during its decades of existence, notably fighting against Romulan and Gorn forces along the borders on a number of occasions. By the 2360s, the KDF had a largely tarnished reputation within the Klingon Empire. Often seen as little more than mercenaries who, while competent fighters, often found themselves divided when it came to internal governmental affairs. With its perception outside the Empire varying depending on the degree of interaction between a given state and Klingon Great House's forces. Things began to change for the KDF as the tensions in the Alpha Quadrant gradually expanded. With the KDF introducing a series of capable new starship classes greatly modernizing its own fleet, while under Chancellor Gowron, the KDF received much increased funding to permit it to grow to a size rivaling the late Imperial Navy of the 2290s. The war between the Klingon Empire and the United Federation of Planets, as well as the Cardassian-Klingon War of the 2370s, saw the Empire enact total mobilization for the first time in the organization's history, with the forces of the Great Houses being absorbed into the KDF and not drawn down afterwards. The Dominion War, which broke out shortly after the earlier wars were concluded, saw the KDF engaged in nearly constant fighting against Dominion forces, fighting alongside Federation and later Romulan fleets right to the very end of the war in some of the most horrific battles of the conflict. Since the war's end, Chancellor Martok has resisted calls to return ships to the Great Houses. Instead, there are rumors that Martok, as a part of his modernization and reform efforts, intends to reorganize and restore the Imperial Navy and wrest away the military power of the Great Houses. Whether true or not, KDF officers have greatly appreciated their increased positions of authority and power, as well as, if only temporarily, no longer having to worry about a disgruntled Great House sending its forces against the Chancellor. In peacetime, for much of its history, the KDF has divided itself into a number of sector commands, each led by a general. Overall, owing its allegiance directly to the Klingon Chancellor, the KDF also features a significant dedicated supply and logistics section attached to each sector fleet. The exact size of the sector fleet varies depending on where the sector is located with border areas understandably having the greatest concentration of ships, while internal regions have far smaller numbers of vessels assigned and hence a much smaller overall amount of control and responsibility. Each sector fleet is composed of several task forces, flotillas, and wings of various types of vessels, with most of the KDF's strength being made up of varying models of birds of prey. Although formed as a response to the harsh reality the Klingon Empire found itself in the late 23rd century, the Klingon defense forces have proved themselves in recent years to be a formidable and capable organization, more than living up to the legacy of the Klingon military's storied and long past, proving itself more than capable in the crucible of modern interstellar warfare. Huge shout out before this video ends to my Patreons for making this video possible. You may notice that this is a redone version of an earlier video of mine. This is part of a series I'm running where I, I basically I got a new microphone and better audio equipment due to Patreon. And I've been going through my older videos and redoing them because in those older videos the video quality or the audio quality was not great. So thanks to them for making it possible.